For hundreds of years, Scottish fishermen have sailed past this pier out into the North Sea, first in search of the herring and then the cod, which enabled them to build an industry and give their communities a reason to exist. Now, scientists say, the fish are disappearing, and these fishermen have been told to cut their catch by 50% and spend a lot more time ashore. For one of the most fishing-dependent regions in Europe, it represents a disaster. Yes, is it okay to come in? James Buchan is on his way back into Peterhead Harbour with a mediocre catch. Since the quotas were announced and days at sea slashed, he says many skippers in the Scottish fleet are now facing bankruptcy. The pressure is on you whenever you leave port. You've got a crew to pay. There's six of a crew. They all have families. They've all got mortgages. They cling to the coast for dear life, the hard, flinty fishing communities of northeast Scotland, now being whipped by bitter winds of change blowing off the North Sea. In the good old days, everything seemed so much simpler, according to retired fishermen like James Corno. There was no quotas, and uh, you can go anywhere you want. You had no log books to fill up. You were your own master, and you just went out to the fish, and everybody had the same opportunities, and everybody could catch whatever, whatever you catch, you were allowed to land. And it was much happier days. I mean, everybody was content. The fishermen were content because science hadn't yet begun assessing just how much damage was being done to fish stocks in the North Sea. But when the data did begin to come in, it revealed the fishermen weren't managing their resource at all. They were simply stripping it. Cod in particular has decreased from something like 250,000 tonnes of spawning fish back in the 1970s down to about 40,000 tonnes at the moment. And because we're removing something like 60% of the stock per year through fishing, clearly in the long term, that's not sustainable. OK, this is our fish behaviour unit. Dr Robin Cook heads Scotland's Fisheries Research Services, or to put it less formally, he's the man who speaks for the cod. If the rate of fishing that we've observed in the recent past continues, the cod stock will probably collapse within a decade. Uh, it, you know, it could be as quickly as three years, it could be five years. And across the North Sea, in the cool glass towers of European decision-making, the European Commission essentially agreed. Commission boss Franz Fischler announcing a 50% cut in the cod quota with similar measures for haddock and whiting. What's more, Scotland's fishermen would be allowed only 15 days at sea each month to catch them. We hope that with these measures uh, we will be back at the normal level of stocks within five to ten years. The fishing community here are very, very angry at the way they've been treated. The, the Scottish fishermen have been discriminated against. They've cut our quotas, they've cut our fleet, and they haven't cut the foreign fleets, France, Denmark and others, to the same comparison as us. Not true, say the bureaucrats in Brussels. We shouldn't forget that there are many other areas in the European Union, uh, for example, the German fishing sector, they reduced uh, to less than half of their former size to fleet during the last years. Uh, so so uh, we cannot, we cannot uh, say uh, in Scotland there is a, a natural right that Scottish fishermen can continue their activities at the size what they had 20 years ago and all the rest of Europe should reduce the fleet. All James Buchan sees is a burly Austrian destroying Scottish livelihoods. I ask him to come to, to 
come to the northeast of Scotland. See the devastation that he's done in the last few years. Come and meet the fishermen. Don't always go with the scientists. Come and meet the people that out, are out there and doing the job. We live in hope. We hope it can get better. But we just seem to go from crisis to crisis. I must go. This fish is coming ashore. It's early morning at the Peterhead Fish Auctions, the busiest whitefish market in Europe. James Scott has been a fish auctioneer for 22 years. He says they used to get 6,000 cases of fish through here every day. Now they're lucky to get half of that. People are living in a depression mood almost uh, because of all the uncertainty regarding the industry. Uh, when I first started uh, 20 odd years ago, uh, things were buoyant. There was a good atmosphere in the, in the industry. Plenty of fish, plenty of boats going to sea. Uh, nobody ever thought it would be redundancies. I remember one of my old bosses saying that you've got a job for life. In the 1890s, Fraser Borough had a fishing fleet of more than 800 boats. Its harbour a veritable forest of masts. Fishing brought prosperity and jobs. These women were known as the gutty girls, cleaning herring by the docks in preparation for export. Scottish quality sent around the world. And Fraserborough still has its gutty girls, working in processing plants, filleting cod and haddock, of the town's 12,000 people, it's estimated that half of all jobs are directly reliant on a living from the sea, and now many of those jobs are at risk. Every industry, every, from the butcher and the baker to the candlestick maker, it affects everyone. The Scottish Fisheries Minister has tried to soften the blow. $150 million on offer to those who decommission their boats and get out of the industry. But most of that money will go to the banks to pay off the huge loans which help skippers buy their boats in the first place. And their crews won't see any of it. That's the future facing Malcolm MacDonald. He spends most of his life living and working aboard the Crystal River, fishing hundreds of miles off the coast in 10-day cycles. Right, this is where we call the cabin. Six beds here. Uh, that's my bed. Uh, and the rest of the crew's beds, they're not much bigger than coffins. Well, this the is work is hard. Room. He sleeps when he can, all the while bouncing round, he says, like a bloody cork in a pond. This is where four of the crew stand, including me, and we've got fish into bins and we've got fish into the washer. I do not enjoy seeing my husband going away back to sea after, after being away for 10 days, home for two days, knowing that he's going back for a further 10. What for? A pittance. For endangering his life and coming home with a, a mere 500 pounds for a fortnight's solid graft. It's just not worth it. Granda, see you next weekend. Carol MacDonald is not just a wife and mother, she is a cod crusader, one of the few people here who refuse to accept that all is lost. You all can why you're here today, because we basically need, we need help. On a chill Wednesday evening, Carol and the Cod Crusaders have organised a pub meeting with other local women to try to give their campaign new momentum. Where men simply can't get a price for their, their quality fish that they're tucking in. 
So the men are now going to give donations of fish, filleted, and we'll bag them and label them. And we're going down to Edinburgh in order just to give these fish away to highlight. Well, they kind of get a price for them, so they're just as well giving them away. Now, there's two the women of this community have never balked at a challenge. A hundred years ago, they used to carry their men out to their boats so they wouldn't have to get their leather boots wet. Carol's husband, Malcolm, is somewhat ashamed that they're carrying their men again. Three women and is Tinoor a male-dominated industry. Three women's fighting for it. For a male-dominated industry. That's what bloody peeves me off the most. And your skippers can't do nothing. They want to stand up. You mention a blockade, they're arguing, oh, we can't do that, that's broken the law. Bugger Allah, do something about it. But do what? The European Commission says the Scottish fleet must endure these quotas so stocks can recover. But what guarantee is there the stock will improve? A similar crisis hit the fishery of Newfoundland a decade ago, and the cod never came back. Maybe the mistake of the past was before I became responsible uh, for the fishing sector, that uh, nobody uh, took care about the stock developments. And now it's rather late, but uh, we hope it's not too late. One, two, two three. Oh. Another night, another symbolic gesture, the lighting of distress flares in Peterhead Harbour. Tonight, the Scottish boats out at sea have turned off their satellite systems to signal the disappearance of their industry. My, my kids is 17 and 14. I honestly hope none of them marry a fisherman. Once upon a time, I, I would have probably loved if I'd been a fisherman. I wouldn't like to see my children have a husband with the pressures their father has. I think it would be arrogant to claim that I understand their situation, but I, I, I clearly have a lot of sympathy for them. I mean, clear that they're placed in an extremely difficult position. Um, and understandably, they, they don't like the science because it's, it's having a very detrimental effect on them as they see it. It's a matter of opinion who is most under threat, the fish or the fishermen. But the people here are used to enduring. They remain grimly determined to ride this storm out. <laughs> 